It doesn't always look the best. Sometimes you're walking and you're saying, God, where are you? <clears throat> Sometimes you can feel his presence very, very, very close to you. There are different seasons in life that you walk. Today, I'm going to focus on one important season. All right? Holy Spirit is the breath of breakthrough. I want, to, I want you to turn with me to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. And I'm going to read a few scriptures from there. Before we reach Isaiah, are you ready to go to another scripture? It's in Psalm 103, verse 7. And this is what it says of God and the way he related to Moses and the children of Israel. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. I, Psalm 103, verse 7. Mm -hmm. This morning, I am talking about an invitation, a call to go deeper. We sang the song, The Woman with an Issue of Blood Pressed In. We may not have an issue of blood, but we are having many issues in life. But let me tell you, the answer to your challenge is pressing into his presence. God revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. God is calling us to go beyond his actions. We get so fascinated when people are healed. We get so fascinated when people are falling in the spirit. We get so fascinated when there is action. But let me tell you, God is saying, I will show my action to the people but I'm giving a call to the Moseses to come in deep. Tap your neighbor and say, are you ready to press in? Are you ready? He's calling us beyond the sparkle into the silence. You know, when we were praying up there as leaders, before we started, Brian came up. He, he, he read a scripture with the Lord said, when you come into his presence, what we do is many times we like to talk. But the scripture counsels us, when you come into his presence, what do you do? You listen. When you are talking, he stops talking. Because he doesn't talk over you. But when you would listen, you can hear him talk. Mm -hmm. Tap your neighbor and say, go beyond the sparkle into silence. Go beyond the busyness into the stillness. It is in the stillness that you see his heart. The only the one who knows his character will know his 
ways. So many times we are so living in the outer place. There are three places in the tabernacle. The outer place, the holy place, and the, what's the third place in the tabernacle? Most holy. There are three places. In the outer court, there's a lot of people. But in the holy place, there are priests. They are doing their duty. But God is calling us to the most holy. Mm. Now let us go to Isaiah chapter 40. I'm going to read a few scriptures here. And I want you to follow with me. Isaiah 40, 26 to 31. I'm going to read from 25. I'm reading in the message translation. So who is like me? Who holds a candle to me? Says the Lord. Look at the night skies. Who do you think made all this? Who marches this army of stars out each night? Counts them off. Calls each by name. So magnificent. So powerful. He never overlooks a single one. Many times when we come to the presence of God, we come with a candle. What is a candle? A light. It is a light. What kind of light is this? A man-made light. We come with a man-made light to God and we ask him, Lord, can't you see? But the Lord is challenging us back and saying, Hey, you are coming with a candle. Look at the stars. Look at the night sky. Do you see the stars? Every star, I know it by name. Amen. Every night, I march this army of stars in the sky. They are going out at my command. Verse 27. Why would you ever complain, O Jacob? Or whine, O Israel? <laughs> Say, God has lost track of me. God doesn't care what happens to me. Don't you know anything? <laughs> Haven't you been listening? God doesn't come and go. God lasts. He's creator of all you can see or imagine. He doesn't get tired out. Doesn't pause to catch his breath. <laughs> and he knows everything inside and out. He energizes those who get tired. He gives fresh strength to the dropouts. He even, for even the young people, tire and drop out. Young folk, in their prime, stumble and fall. But those who wait upon God, 
get fresh strength. They shall mount, they shall spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and don't get tired. They walk and don't lag behind. This morning, I want to talk about a group of people. The Bible calls them those who wait upon the Lord. I want you to emphasize this truth. We have been coming back to this truth again and again and again. Now, he is saying those who wait on the Lord get, get fresh strength. They spread their wings, soar like eagles. They spread their wings and soar like eagles. Eagles, 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 eagles. Have you, I've been studying a little bit about eagles. He didn't say they will spread their wings and soar like doves. He didn't say they will spread like wings and, and, and soar like crows. He didn't say they will spread their wings and soar like chickens. <laughs> he said they will spread their wings and soar like eagles. Why? When eagles, the way they fly is they wait for the wind to lift. When I am working in Ellensburg, I have this privilege to see, just through my window of my workplace, this beautiful, totally bald tree. And periodically I will see a majestic eagle come and sit on top of it. Because there's a little pond there, they're coming to catch fish. And I, sometimes I see the action when the eagle takes flight. Ooh, oh, yeah. hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. The beauty is they are there. Yes. They are sitting there. Every other bird tries to fly, but they are sitting. They are waiting. They are waiting for something to come along. Every other bird will jump a little. I can see this, this little geese come and land and they're, oh, they're beautiful the way they are. But this eagle will be up there waiting. <laughs> and what I understand is they are not waiting for something they can see. They are not waiting for something that they can see. They are waiting for something unseen to move. Those who wait on the Lord shall receive fresh strength. If an eagle is flying, there is a wind that is blowing. Tap your neighbor and say, wait for the wind of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! I'm going to take you to a scripture and I want you to see what this scripture says. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 3. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 3. In the Bible, the Holy Spirit is referenced to as a wind. The Lord is giving us this illustration of the Holy Spirit and he's tying it to what? Mm -hmm. The wind. Say with me, the wind. The wind. 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 Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 3. On the day of Pentecost, <laughs> all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound 
from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. On the day of Pentecost. I want you to see something here what the Lord did. It was on the day of Pentecost. It was a time when God had determined that he is pouring his spirit. Mm. Now, who were they receiving it? Those who were waiting on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Guys, I want you to emphasize this. I want you to focus on this. This is what is the most important. Waiting on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Waiting on the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Waiting for His guidance. Waiting for His leading. Waiting that He will lead you. See, every ministry starts from the Holy Spirit. Not from you. See, we don't like to wait, do we? No. <laughs> wait is something we feel, hey, we should not be doing that. Martha was like that. She was so ready, serving. But Mary found what was needed. Tap your neighbor and say, are you waiting on the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, I'm coming again and again. Those who wait on the Lord will tap into this wind of the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit is an amazing person. But there are times he comes in like a wind. The only people that can step into this wonderful flowing of the Spirit is those who wait on the Lord. Are you there with me? Mm -hmm. Waiting on the Lord is so very, very important. Now turn with me. I'm going to take you to a few scriptures. Is that okay? Yes. I'm going to take you to a few scriptures and I want you to see what is happening. Now let us read in Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. The word spirit in Hebrew means what? Ruach. Ruach. What does Ruah mean? Ruah has three different meanings. One is spirit. The next one is breath. The third is wind. These are the three meanings of the word Ruah. See, the Spirit of God is the breath of God. You know, your breath and my breath may stink, but the breath of God is powerful. Amen. Just a side note. <laughs> Genesis 1, 1. I'm going to read until 1, 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the surface of the waters. The word Spirit of the Lord actually means Ruah, the breath of God was 
covering over the waters. And let me tell you, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. See, I want you to see when the Spirit of God, the breath of God is there and the Word of God is there, then you have the display of God. The Word without the Spirit is information. The Spirit without the Word is inspiration. The Word and the Spirit together is revelation. Don't separate the Word of God and the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is Ruah. Now I'm going to take you to one more scripture and I'm going to dwell in the scripture a little longer. Is that okay? No. Yes. If it is not okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Turn with me to Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. And I want you to read verse. We're going to read few scriptures here. Verse 1, verse 2. Now the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they turn and camp before Pihahiroth between Migdol and the sea, opposite Baal Zephon. You shall camp before it by the sea. Verse 8. And the Lord hardened the heart of the Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with boldness. Verse 9. So the Egyptian pursued them, all the horses and chariots of the Pharaoh, his horsemen and his army, and they overtook them camping by the sea beside Pi. Hariroth before Baal Zephon. And verse 11. Then the people said to Moses, Because there are no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Verse 12. Is this not the word we told you in Egypt? Saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we who should die in the wilderness. Verse 13. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Tap your neighbor and say, Do not be afraid. Not be afraid. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do not be afraid. Stand still. Say, Stand still. Stand still. Yeah. Yeah. Again, say, Stand still. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord which he will accomplish for you today. Mm -hmm. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more for 
forever. The Lord will fight for you. And you shall hold your peace. Now, I want to talk about this amazing story. You know the story. The story how the people were in the wilderness just camping by the Red Sea. And I want you to focus on one little word because I have read this portion so many times. I have preached on this so many times. But today I want to focus on one thing, the wind of God. Amen. That's what I'm going to focus on. Verse 21, you can see the Holy Spirit in action. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 21. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord, say the Lord. The Lord. Caused the sea. Caused the sea. Come on, say caused the sea. Caused the sea. To go back. To go back. Yeah. How did he do that? By a strong By a east strong. wind all through the night. Tap your neighbor and say, God has a wind. Ruha. The spirit. Let me tell you, the spirit of God is in you. Understand that. He's, oh, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's what Jesus said. He said the Holy Spirit is going to come. He will never leave you. But let me tell you, there are times he will blow. Oh, hallelujah. There are times he will blow. When he starts to blow, get ready. <laughs> now, how do you know when it? When you wait on the Lord. <laughs> that is the secret. You wait on the Lord. You inquire the Lord. You await his instruction. And then you know when he's getting ready to blow. Woo! Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back. Oh my God, think about it. Maybe you are stuck in a place. I want you to, before I start jumping into my exposition of 21, I want you to go back to this little word, Baal Zaphon, Baal Ziphon. Say with me, Baal, Baal. Ziphon. Ziphon. You know what that means? The Lord of the North. That's what it means in Hebrew. The Lord. Baal means the Lord. Ziphon means the North. And actually it, it, it denotes an evil demon of the Egyptians that ruled that place. Listen. God sent the children of Israel to go and camp in the very place where there was a demon God. Maybe you're thinking, what am I doing in this God for, for second place? Hey, have you ever thought God has placed you there for a purpose? Hallelujah. You know, many times we think everything is going to be well. Listen, these people of Israel, they were kept by the sea opposite to Baal Zephon. Now, the word Zephon in, in English can be transliterated Typhon. Mm -hmm. Typhon in Greek mythology is actually a monster that is responsible for windstorm. So that place was plagued with storms. Now I want to tell you, people were afraid of Baal Zephon, but God stepped in there and he brought his wind from heaven. I want to tell you is where he places you, he is positioning you for something. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Maybe things are going traumatic, tragedy. 
Hallelujah. But the Lord is saying, I am positioning you there for a few things. Number one, he's positioning you for proclamation. Yeah. He is proclaiming through you who he is. If you read verse, verse 4 of Exodus 14, then I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that he will pursue them. I will gain honor over Pharaoh and all of his army. For the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. Yeah. 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 I want to tell you, when Moses stretched forth his head, the Lord caused a wind. A wind that came through. Mm -hmm. And it caused the sea to go back. <coughs> Tap your neighbor and say, the Holy Spirit is the breath of breakthrough. You know, there are times you have prayed. There are times you have waited. There are times you ask the Lord, but it doesn't still, it doesn't seem to happen. Have you ever been there? Yes. And I want to tell you, those are the times he sends the wind from heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Hallelujah. I'm going to get you back to one scripture in which we already read in Acts chapter 2. And I want you to <coughs> read that, follow that with me. Acts chapter 2. On the day of Pentecost, All the believers were meeting together in one place. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, mm -hmm. the quality of the Holy Spirit, the way he operates is number one. It is suddenly. If you read that in the message version, it says, without warning. Mm -hmm. yeah. He doesn't call you and tell, hey, I'm coming. He doesn't do that. Yeah. He shows up. Hallelujah. When he shows up, he is willing for you to surrender. That's the only way you can work with him. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind. Yeah. Tap your neighbor and say, he is a mighty wind. Yeah. He pushes back the sea. Yeah. He brings the word. To existence. Yes. Holy Spirit is the breath of breakthrough. Mm. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled. Say with me. It filled. It filled. The second character of the Spirit is it Filled. It filled. It filled what? A little bit of the house. <laughs> the whole house. I want to encourage you. Wait on the Lord for the move of the Spirit.
Let's turn to Acts. Chapter 2, <coughs> verse 47. Acts chapter 2, verse 47. Praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Now I want you to underline, I want you to say with me, and the Lord added. And the Lord added. Are you there with me? Mm -hmm. The Lord added. See, there are times when the Lord adds. Now I want you to turn to another scripture. Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6, verse 7. Then the word of God spread. Say with me, spread. Spread. And the number of the disciples multiplied greatly. And a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. One place we see they were added. But in chapter 6 we see they were multiplied. Now, this is what the Spirit of the Lord said to me as we were, as I was meditating. He said, the Holy Spirit is the wind of change. He is the breath of breakthrough. Have you ever felt struck, stuck, distant from God? Your life just ordinary, burdened and overwhelming. The wind of change is blowing. The Holy Spirit is the very breath of God. When he blows, the mundane becomes momentous. The simple becomes special. The ordinary becomes extraordinary. There are days he adds daily. And there are seasons of multiplication. We are in a season of multiplication. Will you press in? Now I want to make a big difference between adding and multiplication. Zero plus one is what? One. Zero plus one is one. Zero <coughs> multiplied by one is what? Zero. Zero. Do you see the difference? <coughs> when you don't bring anything to God, when he multiplies, you will have an answer, what is that? There are seasons where multiplication takes place. And how does God multiply? Is he's waiting for the five loaves and two fish. If you don't bring anything to him, you're going to get the same thing what you bring. That's zero. There are seasons God adds in his sovereign grace. One, two, three. One time he added 300, no, 3,000. Mm -hmm. But there are times of multiplication. Mm -hmm. This is what I am seeing is the time God is multiplying is when we press in. Mm -hmm. When we press in. When we say, God, I bring my five loaves, I bring my two fish, 
I am ready for you to multiply. We are in a season of multiplication. Let me tell you, the wind of breakthrough is right here. The Holy Spirit is blowing on you. Those who wait on the Lord will receive fresh strength. I want you all to stand up together. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. So my challenge to you this morning, are you willing to step in to hear his heart? Are you willing to go the distance. Don't get distracted. Guys, just don't get distracted with a little bit of blessing here, a little bit of blessing there. <laughs> just don't get distracted. So I'm asking you the question, how many of us are willing to go all the way? Hallelujah. I want you to raise your hand. I want you to raise your hand. I want you to I want the devil to see what, what you're committing today. Hallelujah. All the way. All the way. Lord, I'm ready to wait on you. I'm ready to wait on you. Maybe right now you are positioned, placed, camping before that God may ba Baal Zaphon. My goodness. The enemy is challenging you. The devil is attacking you. Everything in your life is being touched by the work of darkness. But I want to tell you this morning that God has placed you there so that he can proclaim to the Egyptians that God is the Lord. That demon that you see is going to be removed and destroyed by the wind of heaven. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory. The second thing the Lord is saying when he blew the wind, it was he put down the king of Egypt, and he exalted the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The second thing I want you to see is he will exalt you today. Psalm 75, 6 and 7. For exaltation comes neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. Amen. He puts down one and exalts 